In this video, we're going to talk about partial derivatives. Now, a partial derivative is referring to when you take the derivative on a function that has more than one input variable. So instead of y being your output and x being your input, you might have something like x and y both being input variables and like z being your output variable or something. Now, whenever you're taking the derivative, the partial derivative, because you have multiple uh, very multiple input variables, it's actually an incomplete question for me to say, take the partial derivative of this function. I have to specify which of those input variables that I'm taking it with respect to. So for example, if you have a function f, f of x, y, f of x, y, what that means is x and y are both input variables. And so if I were to say take the derivative of that, the partial derivative, I have to specify the partial derivative with respect to x or the partial derivative with respect to y. And so this, these are just a few different notations for writing the partial derivative with respect to x. So notice, essentially, you could just put a subscript uh, in front of the f uh, of x, y, or you could literally just do it without that of x, y notation. And similarly, you could just put a little, instead of the, the English D, it's sort of like this, this partial symbol. So it sort of looks like a, like a lowercase D, but you know, it's a little bit more curvy. But in either case, D times your function over DX. Again, that's this notation. Alternatively, again, dropping this of XY is often uh, something that some books and professors will do. So again, just be flexible in terms of when you look at something, how you're identifying what it's asking you to do. So how do you actually find the partial derivative? Now, the good news is if you know how to find a derivative, you basically already know the math behind how do you find a partial derivative. It's just about uh, keeping, your, uh, keeping your focus on the variable that you're taking it with respect to and treating every other letter as a constant. So for example, here, in this question, if I were to say, all right, uh, on this function, take the derivative, the partial derivative with respect to x. And here, let's say I ask you to take derivative with respect to x. Essentially, imagine that every letter other than x is a number. Or for example, pi. Pi is a number. If I were to ask you to take the derivative of pi squared, you wouldn't say 2 pi. You'd say 0. Because pi squared is still a number, and the derivative of a number is zero. So that's sort of the thing to keep in mind. The derivative of five is zero. So basically, here, when you're taking it with respect to x, everything that's not x is treated like a number. So when I'm reading this, I'm basically reading this as six x squared plus four times some other number, like four pi, for example, or four times five, for example. And in either case, that's just a number. So if I were to actually take this derivative, this partial derivative, you go term by term, right? So in this first term, the derivative of 6x squared is just going to be 12x plus, and the derivative of 4y, again, that's like a constant. So the derivative of a constant is 0. So this is no different than if I said, what's the derivative of 6x squared plus 20? You'd say 12x, and that's it, period because this is just plus zero for the derivative. The so same thing here, the partial derivative is just 12x. Similarly, I could alternatively have asked you, what's the derivative of this guy with respect to y? So I could have asked you, what's the derivative with y as the variable? Now, same thing, but the other way around. Here, 6x squared is just some number, because x is just some number, squared is still a number, times 6 is still a number. So again, this here is just like, I don't know, 55 plus 4y, like some number plus the thing with your variable in it. And so the derivative of that, the derivative of this is just zero. So it's really just the derivative of 4y, which is four. So there you have it. That's a simple example of partial derivatives. Let's uh, find the partial derivatives now for this guy. Here, if I were to ask you what's the partial derivative with respect to our first variable, p, so I could ask you what's the derivative of g with respect to p, 
All right. Now here, unlike this first problem we did where there was a plus in the middle, uh, here, these are all multiplied. Now that's where we're just going to have to, again, uh, think very carefully about that. So here, we're still treating everything that's not a P like it's a number. But now it doesn't just drop to zero like it does when you're adding a constant, because when you're multiplying a constant, it doesn't go away in the derivative, it just stays there as is. You don't amend it. So here, this q to the third power is like a number. So this is just a number no different than eight is a number that's being multiplied to the object that has my variable in it, in this case, p squared. So here, I'm looking at this and I'm treating this in my mind as no differently than 8q to the third power as just being some constant. So like 8q to the third power, this is just some number to me times my main variable, p squared. So the derivative is just going to involve taking this 2 out front. So then that's just going to be 16 uh, q to the third power. So that constant is really just 16q to the third now instead of 8q to the third because of that 2. But then times, I'm just left with p to the first power, right, which is just p. So there you have it. My derivative here is just going to be 16 q to the third power, because uh, that's what that constant is, and then times just p. Similarly, if I were to ask you to find the partial derivative with respect to uh, the other variable, q, so the derivative of g with respect to q, now the 8p squared is like a constant, and then so this just stays along for the ride. I'm not going to change that p squared or do anything with it. I'm just going to take the derivative of q to the third power, which involves taking the 3 out front, uh, which will then make this actually 24 instead of 8 p squared, and then times q to the power of 3 minus 1, 2. So that's the partial derivative with respect to q. All right, now let's take a look at this function here. Now. Here, just because there's more than two variables, here there's three input variables, no matter how many there are, the process is still the same. You treat every letter that's not the variable that you're taking the partial derivative with respect to, you treat every other variable as a number. So here, if I were to ask you, first of all, what is uh, the derivative with respect to eight, uh, x, so what is the h the x, uh, well, let's see. Here, uh, in this first term, that involves an x. Uh, so if this was just some constant times x, uh, it's in the ln. So I would just do the rules for logs, right? So the derivative of, uh, so for the logs, is this going to be 1 over whatever's on the inside? So 1 over xy. But then chain rule times the derivative of the xy. And keep in mind, the derivative of y is, oh, well, the derivative y is just a number, so the derivative of xy is just going to be y. If this was 5x, it'd be pretty clear that the derivative is 5. And similarly, think of it as yx, where y is just some number, and so the derivative is just going to be that y, that number that's multiplied to my variable. And so the variable just goes away, uh, because it's to the first power, x to the first power, so it goes away. Then you take the derivative. So that's that. That's the derivative of this first term. But then plus, and there's no x here in the second term of z squared, so it just goes away. That's just some constant, so the derivative is zero for this term. So overall, the derivative with respect to h is just this guy, uh, with respect to x is just this guy. And here, further, you can cancel the y's, uh, so this is really just 1 over x. So the derivative with respect to x is just 1 over x. Um, the derivative with respect, uh, notice another way to do that before we proceed. Another way to have done that, uh, and this is a more general strategy thing, with logs, if you want to, you could always have split this up as this ln of a, b is ln of a plus ln of b. So you could have rewritten this as ln of x plus ln of y, right? That's not taking the derivative or anything. This is just rewriting the problem. So you can rewrite the problem as ln of x plus ln of y plus z squared. And now... Taking the partial derivative is super easy. You don't have to worry about chain rule or anything because it's just three terms, and these two terms don't even have my variable in it, my x, so they just drop completely. And so the derivative with respect to x is just the derivative of this term, which is 1 over x. 
Similarly, if I ask you what's the derivative with respect to y, these two terms drop and it's just one over y. And if I ask you what's the derivative with respect to z, these two terms drop and it's just two z. Now, other new terminology, cross partial derivatives. Now, whenever you have a variable with a function with multiple input variables, um, now, if I were to say find the second derivative, that's where, again, it's a little bit ambiguous. If you have a function with respect to both x and y, and uh, notice there's now three different ways I can ask you for a, a second derivative. I could either ask you for the just the pure second derivative with respect to x, which means take the derivative with respect to x, and then take the derivative with respect to x again. So that's the second derivative uh, with respect to x. And then similarly, I could just ask you to take the derivative with respect to y twice. So that's the second derivative with respect to y. But uh, now a new option that I have is I could say take the derivative with respect to x first, and then whatever you get, now take the derivative and switch which is your variable and which you're treating like a constant. So take it first with respect to x, and then with respect to y. So that notation sort of like this is called a cross partial derivative. So a cross partial derivative is essentially a type of second derivative where you're taking it uh, first with respect to one variable, but then the second time with respect to a different variable. So, uh, and this is just some notation. This we saw, but uh, the whole notation with the dy dx here, it's the same as the top, like d squared uh, y, or sorry, in this case, d squared f, but instead of dx squared, uh, it's this, it's dx dy, because you're doing it once with respect to y and once with respect to x. So again, that's just notation. So here, let's say you're given this question. This is the problem we did earlier, uh, this guy. And now we're asked to find the cross partial derivative with respect to p, q, right? So first with respect to p, then with respect to q. Here's a question. Does the order matter if I take it first with respect to p and then with respect to q, or the other way around, first with respect to q, then p? And the answer is actually no, it doesn't. And let's just do it both ways for this problem to make sure that it doesn't. So here, if I were to say find the cross partial derivative of this guy, first I'm going to take the derivative with respect to p and get this guy. So just copying this guy over here. That's uh, 16 q to the third p. So 16 q to the third p. That was my derivative of g with respect to p. Now, if I were to say, all right, for you did it with respect to p, now find the derivative of this with respect to q, so let's uh, flip it. So this is already g sub p, but now I'm also going to take the derivative with respect to q. So now I'm treating 16 and p as my constant, and so really it's just the derivative of q to the third power. If I have a 16 p, I'm just going to group these together, and then it's the derivative of q to the third, which is 3q squared, which, you know, I could simplify this. 16 times 3 is 48, so that's 48pq squared. Now, alternatively, I could have done first the derivative with respect to q. The derivative with respect to q we found earlier was this guy, 24p squared q squared. So this is 24p squared q squared. And now I could flip and say, now you've done it once with respect to Q, now do it with respect to, uh, to P. So in this GQ, I'm going to now take the derivative a second time, but with P as my variable now. So here, now I'm going to treat this 24Q squared as my constant. I'm going to group that out front. And then the main thing is the derivative of P squared, because that's your variable now. Uh, and so the derivative of that's 2P. And I could, 24 times 2 is 48, and then I got a p, and then I got a q squared. So p, q squared, lo and behold, these two are the same, and that just, again, is just evidence that the order doesn't matter. But yeah, so that's how you do a cross partial derivative.